What's up? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the season finale, wow. season four of the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. This is your girl, Makiba. No, I'm just kidding. We never do that. You know that? We, we never don't. introduce ourselves. No. This is Makiba. This is Brittany. Yes. Sassy yet Sassy classy. Yet classy. Um, thank you guys for joining us. We are live, but we are also not live. What am I trying to say here? <laughs> we are live right we now on live. Instagram. Goodness. But well, we have some really cool lighting that you can't see, and you'll see it in the YouTube video. So, oh, that's right. You can't see. Yeah, you can't see it on the Instagram one, but our YouTube lighting is really cool. And shout out to the people who have followed us on YouTube. Um, I encourage everybody to, oh, cheers. Cheers to our season finale, you guys. Um, but go follow us on YouTube or subscribe. What's the word? That's the right word, right? Mm -hmm. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We have a channel and we put our live little recording up there on our YouTube channel because Instagram plays games with our emotions and it doesn't always save it to our story. So every cheer chat, not every single one, but most of the cheer chats from this season four are up, up there. there. And some other little goodies um, like from Oakland. We just came back from the oh, game. Oh, I didn't put them up yet, but okay. yes. <laughs> but hit that be. notification bell, subscribe, hit the bell so that you'll know when we load. Because videos. we are going to load tonight along with this video. So we're, I'm kind of like, maybe that's why I'm being weird. It's really hitting that it's the last one. Well, not forever. I'm sad, but it's been, you know, a really fun season. And so we're just having a little cocktail to host all of our wonderful and amazing guests you guys it really like we just counted them out and we have a, quite a few people people that we love and respect in our space and so we'd like to give a shout out to everybody who joined us this season ready go no i'm just kidding we, <laughs> okay. we keep wrote them down um we did start i'm gonna should i jump over on the list no okay we'll forget so we'll fine go. um well, one of the people we interviewed really early on was Derek Whitfield. Yes. So he's the director of the Washington Wizards, like, pole dancing program, wisdom, yes. all that good stuff, the junior program, the dancers. Oh, it's been amazing watching their performances. Like, I almost had to kill Pull the F Out Friday because it's like I keep wanting to pick the Wizards, and it's like maybe, you know, need to not seem so biased, but... They're doing an amazing job, and it was so cool to talk to him. So thank you, Derek, for your time and your energy. It was infectious, and uh, seeing you and Michelle hang out together made me jealous. I think it's time to take another trip to D.C. so we can all hang out. Yes. Yes. I'm Cheers addicted to, to hanging out too, with all, all the listeners, all the people <laughs> that participate in the show. J.C. Scott was another fun one. Um, former Rockets dancer, former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, sweet as pie, just a beautiful soul and I really loved her interview. She was very inspirational, um, her starting her own foundation and just, you know, doing things to touch people's lives and change people's lives for the better, raising awareness for pancreatic cancer. So loved her interview. That was a fun one. And then we did Laurel Cancella. Yes. We think that's how you say the name. But yes. cheers to Laurel. She does all of our custom uniforms um, for the Seattle Seahawks dancers and formerly the sea gals yes <laughs> so she was adding gemstones one at a time swarovski crystals yeah i keep that word it's so hard swarovski swarovski it's like it? worcestershire sauce <laughs> <laughs> swarovski but it was amazing hearing her story too and just how she got it all done i mean that was our change clothes episode Mm -hmm. And then, I know, it's almost like going back and forth of like who we were really super pumped about for different reasons, but True. Vietta Hazley was our HBCU dancer from Howard University, and uh, she's involved with the Bengals. She's a former Bengals cheerleader and is involved in the coaching staff now, and that just set me off. Like, I was just so happy. And okay, I already told you, but I'm just going to tell you guys, my mom really, this might be her Christmas present, but she wants to go to the Battle of the Bands. Um, that they have in Atlanta in January to see all of the HBCU bands perform and literally like drumline and with their dancers and the whole nine yards. And if you guys think I'm extra, my mom is. We need to interview her, I think. Oh my Let's Lord get Jesus. her on the show. That's what my vote is. It will need to involve a performance <laughs> where she can kick her leg up to her head. She's just a feisty little soul. And um, I have a feeling if 
I take her down there, she will somehow end up on the field. It's just, it's just it becomes the barber show. So. I want to go. Oh my so. gosh. Can I send you and my mom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be so oh my fun. Gosh. It's a I conflict love your mom. because it's uh, around Pro Bowl weekend, so we got to figure it out. But anyway, the point is HBCU dancers are the shit. I just love them. And I kind of would love to see the Honda Battle demands. Totally. My mom will make it even spicier. <laughs> Lord help me, Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of somebody who always kills it, then we interviewed Michelle Vaughn, which was yes. amazing. Yes, yes, yes. The choreography is everywhere. Pop, rock. Yeah, there's just so many songs that come to mind. But yeah, she was great to interview and had a lot of interesting perspective on the industry and the business. And then we got to interview our first live current cheerleader. You and to drink up. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> drink. Yes, drink, 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 drink. I'm talking too much. Um, Candace from the Redskins was our first current cheerleader. And we just realized how special that is because we wanted to talk to so many different people this season. And it's, you know, it's tough. I don't think we got clearances. And so maybe because we drank too many curves. I don't know. Probably. Aww. And I didn't even brush my hair today. So don't come at me. Oh, well. <laughs> but Candace, thank you so much for um, just helping us understand the magic of the Redskins cheerleaders, um, sending us a calendar. Just It was just a great opportunity for us to be able to connect with you and share you with so many others who completely look up to you. Like, you are the queen, and happy belated birthday, even though I already told you happy birthday, but still. <laughs> it's Scorpio, Scorpio month forever. No, I'm kidding. Who was next? God, there were still more. You have it hidden for me, so oh. that's why I keep awkwardly. Oh. Then we interviewed Kristen Ann Ware. That was a two-parter, um, mm -hmm. and it was kind of focused around, you know, the lawsuit that she was involved with, as well as, like, mental and emotional health. So that one was pretty heavy, but it needed to be put out there for sure. Agreed. And there's, you know, a growing, I won't even call it movement because their lawsuits have passed, but, you know, there's a group of people that are kind of like trailblazers of making our pro cheerleading industry better based on their lawsuits. And, you know, we'll have to see if we can, you know, reach out to them and also hear their stories. I just think it's a matter of respect for our industry and things that we've all benefited from, whether it's higher pay or um, some rules going away that didn't need to be there to just a heightened awareness of how we're treated. Um, I think we kind of owe it to these ladies. So, Chrisanne, thank you so much for taking the time with us to talk and, you know, just enlightening us. I mean, everybody has a story. So, mm -hmm. and so we appreciate you sharing yours with us. And then Adrian Santillari was our last interview. That was my girl from Philly. She still is. I'm just like, I want everything to have sense because we're recapping the season, but um, it was a great chat. And we really, I still want to even know what people think and what their reaction was just to certain points. Maybe I'm just pumping it up, but I just think it was really like a breath of fresh air of like, you know what, you know, life goes on. I mean, I think when we think a lot you know, over the past year you guys there's been so much in our space and I know I was hot and bothered if I listen back to some of those episodes I might be like damn take a chill pill it's like it's not life or death like I had people I had like a hit list a little bit <laughs> of execs kind of. that I wanted to go after on Twitter and stuff but you know it's just something that I think we all adjusted we're all still adjusting and I think people are finding new opportunities and just hearing about Adrian having such a long career in the NBA I mean you keep it pushing and you know <laughs> and, what I mean? no I'm kidding well we have a whole year behind us in terms of episodes and so I'm really excited for 2020 that's crazy to say but I know. we might pop in before then but if not happy new year <laughs> just you'll hear from us on social media but yes this will be a break for the holidays Thanksgiving's next week obviously um steal yourself a piece of turkey leg and Eat some dessert, everybody who's on a team. Just treat yourself that day. Enjoy your families, obviously. And um, yeah, I think we'll give some time and space for the holidays, regroup and everything. And 2020 is right around the corner. Craziness. What else did we do that was crazy? Okay, it's time to talk Oakland. <laughs> time to talk Oakland. Shout out to the Raider Eds. You guys were so fun to watch on Sunday. Um, we should just talk them through our trip. Okay. Okay. Me? I've been running like, out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a really short trip, unfortunately. We've been before. We went to a preseason game a few years yeah. back. 
Um, and that was a blast, but I had no idea how crazy Raider Nation was regular season. Like, my mind was blown. So we got in Saturday night. <laughs> we kind of, like, went out and did our thing, right? So the next day, you know, that's why some of the photos oh, you're look crazy. Stuff. Am I? What did yeah. we get? Our dinner with? Well, of course. Yeah, our dinner with Danielle and Savannah. That's true. Let's just say that was just such a sweet time to really connect with them and learn about each other. And they were just so sweet to pick us up from the airport, Danielle and Savannah coming out. And just, I just really, I cherish those times because we don't get to like interact with people one-on-one -on -one as much. We can't even see who's freaking joining on Instagram <laughs> right now, but. Um, totally. But it was really sweet of her to take time, just hearing about the uh, Raider S program, how hard they work, how they practice, what time they had to get to the stadium was That was going. crazy. Um, but it showed in the performance. You guys really rocked it, and it was so fun to watch. So, I know. How could I have skimmed over that? I don't know. I'm so sorry. That was like the best right. part of the trip. No, it really was. No, I think I'm still recovering, so maybe I shouldn't be taking <laughs> more sips. But we did have dinner our first night. Then Brittany and I decided to go out mm -hmm. uh, for a little libation, if you will. And we ended up at... Where did we go? Hello, Stranger. Yes. O Lounge and then Hello, Stranger. Okay, can I just tell you, my highlight was the soul food buffet that was oh, outside true. of Hello Stranger. Changed my life. I mean, when I tell you, in Seattle, when you leave the club or whatever, we have hot dog stands everywhere. And, you know, yay. But soul food kitchen, like like a whole like fried chicken, yams, mac and cheese, greens, even though they were turnip greens, I'm not a fan. But, um, and then they had like shrimp alfredo and stuff. Yeah, my mouth's watering. <laughs> It, it was, was delicious. Best. It was just like a angel started singing and like, you know, to come out of a place and you're like, you know, you're hungry, but you it's late night. I was not, ex I was all messed up from that. I was so happy. Me too. It was the best. Remember we had some guy coming off over to us, bumming, trying to bum some of our food. Yes. And we did no. not give him any. We did not play a game. Yeah. We were waiting for our, our lift and we chowed down. Shoo shoo. We're eating. <laughs> Don't talk to me. It was so good. It was oh awesome. Gosh. Sorry that was a highlight. And then, now we can begin with the actual game day experience, which was really cool. It was super cool. So we stayed pretty close, so we just kind of walked over Got there. our Raiders gear. Yeah, got our Raiders gear. Yes. Went to Raiders Image, right? Mm -hmm. Got some gear, and then we tailgated, and it was so fun. Like, I wish we could do that in Seattle, but unfortunately, we're just not set up for it. Yeah, it's kind of like on Occidental, like the street that's on its way to the stadium where people set up, but maybe it's, nothing just has this vibe. I don't know, maybe other teams have it, but I've never seen anything like it. And so we're walking around through the tailgating area and we must have looked like tailgating virgins because a guy <laughs> ended up approaching me. <laughs> was like, you're not, this is your first time, isn't it? And it really, compared to preseason, it absolutely was our first time um, because it was night and day different, so crowded, elaborate tailgating stations or whatever you want to call it, tailgating stops. What do you call this? I don't know. There was like a huge oh, Darth Vader like display. The one that we ended up at had like the DJ booth and like a, another soul food this buffet. I mean, how did we not end up making a plate there? Because we had just eaten and then another tailgate gave us carnitas. That, was, um, that were a little dry, but thank you so much. <laughs> He was from Portland. It was awesome. Everybody was so freaking friendly. Like people want to talk were. about Raiders fans, but I just thought they were so inviting. People were from all over, like New York, Canada, Europe. Europe. It was crazy and just just awesome. It was a great vibe. And then you go in the stadium and it's like I don't people know how... nonstop yell Raiders, Raiders the all whole time. The entire time in the concourse. So they're waiting even... for a beer and they're yelling Raiders, Raiders, like like loud. I just there's no time out. You know what I mean? Like, but I was surprised that they weren't doing that watching the game. Like they're focused hella on the game. But right. like when they're in the concourse, it is Raider Nation screaming Raiders. Like I just thought it was my daddy was very proud. He's a diehard Raiders fan. He was so giddy for Brittany and I to go to this game and then talking to him about what it was like. He, I could hear him smiling through the phone. Like he was like, it's not like anything else, not like any other fan base. So like, true. You are right, daddy. You're right. I hope that like Las Vegas can have that same energy, you so. know, because when teams move, it makes it really hard for fans. But there were some diehard fans there that were still going to make the move as well. That's true. You know, travel out for every game and. It's paying the spiked 
like his season time tickets. The price. Oh, yeah, people were they were not thousand dollars for season tickets, and now having to pay ten thousand. So. Uh, my daddy's thrilled, but I, I do see that being a little bit of a challenge. And it's Vegas. You can't, like, tailgate in freaking Lord knows how hot weather. Like, it's not happening. So I, I consider that part of the Raiders game day experience. So I don't know how you are going to replicate that. I don't that. know how that's going to happen. I mean, obviously, it'll be a nicer stadium. So welcomed, I guess. But, but watching the girls, I mean, so that's the Raiders game day thing. But we, of course, get pumped. For the girls, we had to sweet talk some ushers to let us go down and get our little <laughs> recording on. Um, but it was just so cool to watch the ladies perform and shine. Like they looked good, they danced well, they were sassy. Okay, I'm all for their like walk. On and off. On and off. Okay, like it's like not just like, like we would run and like rally with, was it this hand or the other hand? I don't know. We would run on and like kick your seat and it's really cute and kind of spastic. And you do the same thing off, um, but if we got to just... But I love that they sauntered on, basically, and, like, they timed it perfectly to where they weren't, like, setting up and looking at each other. It was, like, they walk, and then the music starts, and, like, it's yes. part of them walking out, and they're just, like, hitting the first and move. From the very like, beginning. They killed it. I was, like, I couldn't stop watching them. Yeah. Like... I love it. I'm, I kind of want to do it. Like, I have... You know how you just dance around at home and stuff? Right. Well, they would like move their hands with their palms, with their hips, with and, their their hips and accentuate and, uh, the like action. Yeah. And Danielle, she's a rookie, but you would never have guessed. Like she killed it out there, and it was like I so amazing. Watching. Oh my god. Yeah, it was so cool to see her in her element. Yeah, just all the different personalities. I mean, I think they just dance really well together, and I, I would love to watch them again. Yes. I kind of. I just, and I want to do the, I want the pom-poms to just, I just want to do that. We'll get you some. Okay. <laughs> Even though we have a few pairs at home. <laughs> it's not we'll the same. practice. But no, congrats to all the ladies. You guys, I hope, make it to the playoffs and beyond. Like, you looked really, really good out there. And to know that you guys, didn't you guys go abroad too? Who's representing yep. for the NFL? I think it's. They're in London. Mm-hmm. You guys look great. And yep. they were just in Mexico, not they, but like, you know, the games in Mexico and stuff right. and just. You guys are representing like what NFL cheerleading is all about around the world and you know, should be proud. Absolutely. I was proud of you guys. <laughs> I know it's, we are such okay, should we tell them like how we like Well we went down what did we do? as soon as we got to my friend's seats because she was down there as well. Shout out to Kim. Um but we went to her seat, her section, because she had better seats. Not better seats, but closer seats, I yeah, should say. Yeah, she was closer. Um, and so we were like, oh, we'll get some footage of whoever's there. So we, like, rushed down to, <laughs> to the front <laughs> row. And we're just, like, such cheese, cheese balls. But, you know, we're, like, waving. And I don't know. Obviously, we couldn't really. We could wave at people, but it'd be just a little unprofessional, I guess. We'd be like, hi, or whatever. But it was just really sweet to just see them up close and personal. I, I'm a groupie. No, you guys are, they were amazing, and I could actually, like, a few of them made eye contact, mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, maybe I'm making this up, but, <laughs> like, while we were waving, it was kind of like, hi, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, but absolutely, like, there was a million eyes and, you know, cameras on them, they couldn't just, like, yeah, but I, I would were, totally do that when I was, I was on CL. So oh my whatever. gosh, I would, help. I'm surprised I was needed five years, but, <laughs> but it was just great to see you guys, we were so excited, and we're just, like, cheerleaders for all of the cheerleaders everywhere and like if we could travel like that to see everybody perform like i would be the happiest person like we were talking about that like what if we're just old and gray and still trying to make it a point to see every pro cheerleading team we're that gonna do it i think i commit to that free tickets help ladies no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gents no i'm kidding but um it's just but Danielle definitely hooked us up, and that's why yeah. we were motivated to go. I mean, it takes a lot of know, expenses out of it. Getting there was the main focus, and then she provided the tickets, which was so amazing. So thank you, Danielle. Not all teams provide that to their cheerleaders. That's but true. If you kind of want some exclusive video of yourself, I don't know, like how your like, parents would do. Right. Sorry, we didn't. You're better at videoing. I tend to scream for people. And well, I'm sure you guys noticed on my recent posts, it's like all over the place. But I tried to focus. <laughs> you got good I mean, footage. You got I'm good footage. using my phone, so maybe we'll upgrade to some like legit camera in the future. Patreon. And, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. We can try to, you know, between trying to go to more games in the future, um, 
equipment, whatever. I mean, you guys get the gist. I mean, it's just something about like knowing people are there for you that are rooting for you that I remember that feeling like when I was out there. It's just, it's just it makes you feel good. You know? It made me nervous, but it made you nervous. It would make me nervous. To I'm like know, sweating thinking about it. To know people were. Yeah, like if if it wasn't just like my parents or like if it was somebody new or you would get nervous. I would get nervous, you know, because you want to do a good oh, job because okay. someone's listening. You're performing for them, kind of. That's so. true. I'm trying to think if I invited guys like that. I don't think so. Nobody that would make me nervous. Nobody makes you nervous, Wakiba. You run the show, okay? I do. That's not. obvious. <laughs> No, but super excited to do some more of that in the future. I can't even tell you how happy it makes us to see you guys shine and doing your thing. And that's what this, you know, platform is about is like lifting everybody up in their best light and just showing, you know, how great and amazing we are. Like we are dope. Like you guys were dope. And whoever's out there that's performing in BA, you guys got a whole long season ahead. I mean, maybe we will get to travel again and go check out some more teams during, not necessarily during the off season that we're not on air, so to speak, with the podcast out. But we look forward to more trips. We love to travel, both Brittany and I. So, yeah. Yay. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> that was our trip. But basically, we got on a plane and headed back. Well, actually, not right away. We had some delays. It's fine. But mm -hmm. good old Alaska Airlines. But, you know, we made it back in one piece. And, um... Shout out to my boss. I don't think he even watches, but he was actually on my flight. I was like, <laughs> a few people you knew were on the flight, actually. We won't go into detail, but. <laughs> Somebody accidentally whacked in the head with my bag. Accidentally on purpose. Not quite. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We'll edit that out. Um, so anyway, a little exclusive for tuning in on Instagram or YouTube. Because we don't edit this. And we don't edit YouTube either. Yeah, we don't. All right, back to business. Okay, I'm getting hot. <laughs> um, so, this episode, you guys, is called Motivation because we got to talk to Janine Samuels, who is a former Redskins cheerleader, former Wizards girl, owner of Sideline Prep, like, stats go on and on and on. In-game host. In game host for the Redskins. She's, she's just everywhere. She's like... Queen of DC, like literally, she's amazing. And we talked to her a while back. We've kind of been like sitting on the wonderful news that we decided to partner with her um, with Sideline Prep in the sense that people who sign up for her program, I think it's just, you're gonna hear all about it in this episode. Um, we encourage you to tune in and listen. Um, but basically we, we believe in what she's doing. I think she's like the greatest motivational speaker for people in this space, just to, Follow her on Instagram, Sideline Prep, I believe is the, <laughs> I think that's the handle. We'll get it to you in our show <laughs> notes, but um, she's just a breath of fresh air and a uh, energy shot, basically, of like why you're doing this. Like if you ever question why you're out there, why you're working so hard, especially for people who are trying to make teams, like this is the person that you would totally want in your corner, totally. Yeah, I felt like when we were talking to her, I could do anything. And I was like, I haven't done enough in my life. Like, she's done the whole gamut. Like, from A to Z, she's done it. And um, another great example of someone who maybe, like, had an idea of their path and mm -hmm. veered off just because they went by their gut and what they realized was right for them. Yeah. And she ended up exactly where she wanted. So I think everything happens for a reason. Um, but you just got to stay motivated and definitely fight through any negativity or doubts. And yeah. she's the person to listen to. For sure. And just to think about this past year and everything that you guys may have been through with some of the changes that have happened, whether your dance opportunities may have disappeared or things didn't work out the way you wanted to with auditions. Like, you know, if you're listening, like, it's not over. You know, I just had a birthday. Like, life goes on. Like, the years pass. And... You know, there's definitely like that motivation just to just shake off the, you know, the stuff that didn't go your way and then go hard in the paint for what you really want. And I just think you decided that this should be the season finale because it just ends on such a good, strong note of this is what you can do with this space. Like, and for people who have been on teams and maybe you're closing in on, you know, a time where you might consider retirement, it's just like inspirational to think about what else you can do mm -hmm. with your background. Like, if you always love talking to people and being in front of cameras and this and that and the other, like 
in-game hosts like you would think. Like, I'm sure there's just so many opportunities for us, you guys, to leverage your background, your passions. If you love working with vets, like, um, you, there's just so much. Listen to this interview. I think you'll be inspired and you'll hear more on the other side of like more of the program in terms of how we are partnering with her and just so that you guys can have all the details you need to sign up and get the assistance that you would need for the sideline prep. So we'll talk to you guys at the end. Stay tuned and until next time, well, keep your eyes on the sidelines because it's going to be a long little break. We'll miss you. Stay tuned on our social media channels like Instagram, Twitter. I'll probably be popping off a little bit more on Twitter, you know, more time on our hands. <laughs> but we're excited to stay in touch. Please reach out to us. Do not hesitate. If you have questions, if you have topics for next season, if you want us to reach out and interview anybody in particular, we're open to feedback um, and we are excited to see you on the other side. Thanks again for an amazing yes, year with us. Like we just appreciate you guys and so much. Can't wait to see where we end up. Yeah. Oh, where? No, I'm kidding. Of course we can't wait to see. No, it'll be an, it'll be good. We might come up with, you know, some exciting new ideas. Never ideas. <laughs> you never know what's up our little sleeves, but we definitely will be active on social media so that you guys stay engaged and don't forget about us, okay? okay. I miss 